Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Now, a little while ago, I uploaded a video about some news that Razer were gonna be bringing PC components to the market. Well, I'm pleased to say they're finally here. So something a little bit different for the intro, I thought I'd do something a bit special as these are kind of highly anticipated products. But we have some of the Razer PC components on hand. So we have the Hambo, which is that AIO all-in-one liquid cooler. This comes in a 240 mil and a 360, 240 here for us to look at today. Then we've also got some of the Kunai fans. So they do them in single packs either 120 mil or 140 mil and you can also get three packs as well so in this video we're going to do an unboxing and an overview of these products but i'm also going to do an installation guide of the hambro chroma for any of you guys that might want to add this into your existing system i know a lot of people like the razor stuff so they might think oh i'd really love to add that but i'm a bit unsure about how to do it so stay tuned for that and there will be a card on the screen when it's live so let's start off with the Hambo Chroma. As I mentioned, this is the 240 mil. You can also get a 360. This is an Asatec based design. It does come with two of the uh, Kunai fans included as well. Opening it up, we've got a what's inside bit of information. I'll run you through the different things that are in there though. We have the biggest instruction manual I've ever seen. It's actually a fold out guide. It's not an instruction manual. There are some razor stickers in there as well. So this is basically a quick start guide about how to get up and running with this. But as I said, I will be doing my installation guide if you want to see it a bit more detail. So nice piece of protective foam to reveal a very well packaged hand bow. This is really thick padding all the way around. So nice to see that this is going to be very well protected in shipping. So let's open up some of the boxes. Let's go for the right one first. Very snug. So this is all our mounting hardware. Intel 1700 is supported. Doesn't say that on the website. So Razer, you do need to update that as soon as possible. You could lose a lot of sales from people that are looking to use this for a new build. So get that updated. I will confirm whether this fits on AM5 as the backplate's a little bit different. And also Intel supports all the way back to 1366. So anything that you've built within the last 10 years. In the top left box, we've got all of our cables that will go to the pump. So there is a USB Type-C to USB 2 header that will be for your RGB control and software. There's also a cable that goes to the pump, so that will go to the actual pump block. Then you've got the power, which is a SATA cable. Then there's daisy chains for the different fans. And you've also got some RGB control on there as well. Here are the two fans that are included. So two 120 mil Kunai fans. Obviously, if you're using the 360, you'll get three. There's a little bit of a closer look. We've got a nice rubber for anti-vibration on the side. The RGB is under a diffused section. All of these fans have got daisy chain capability as well. And then you've got a four pin for power. So this is 275 millimeters long, 123 millimeters wide, and a depth of, they say 30 on the website, but it's actually 28. So pretty much standard for a 240 rad. Then you've got 400 mil of rubber nylon tubes. It's got a nice sleeve coating on there as well to then the pump, which is 800 to 2600 RPM. Nice chunky block, standard Aztec design, as I said. There is pre-applied thermal paste, which is nice and convenient. There's no extra thermal paste in the box though. So if you're gonna replace this, you will need to buy some additionally. So standard kind of block. So if you wanna take the bracket off, just twist and it pops off. So if you're gonna to swap to AMD, comes with Intel as standard. If you're gonna mount this onto your motherboard with the cables coming out the right, which most of the AIOs go that way, then the cables on the top of the pump will connect straight out so they can go up and tuck behind the motherboard tray. We've got the USB-C cable, which will go to the USB 2 header. So that'd be Razer Synapse. Then we've got the connection on the right, which will be for the pump power and also the daisy chain for the fans. We've got a nice peel on there. We can just take that off. And like most Razer things, that will also be controllable with the software. Other little things around the pump is plastic. And then obviously we've got a copper block for the heat transfer. And you can also take the top off as well and rotate it. So whichever way you put this in your system, the logo can always be upright. So the additional fans, we've got the 140 mil and the 120s. So here's a 120 and then a 140. So the Kunai are hydraulic bearing fans. They've got a lifespan of 60,000 hours as well. Just a, you know, random fact for you. Little thing to unwrap to get your fan out. Be excessive on the materials so. though. For the 120 mil, there's 18 addressable LEDs, whereas the 140 mil, there's 22. You can daisy chain these fans up to eight on a single run, so that can help with cable management. As you can see, we've also got 
a five volt addressable header. There's also another one so you can connect the second fan. If that's not enough, you can also use their Chroma addressable RGB controller. Now, as a quick side note, that will only take six, but it also uses a USB 2 header rather than a five volt addressable. So if you've only got one on your motherboard, that's another way to get around it. Each fan, regardless of size, comes with four insulation screws or four rubber grommets, so you can use what you prefer. Speed-wise, the 120mm will do up to 2200 RPM and the 140 up to 1600. One thing I quickly want to mention is there is a sleeving for the four-pin PWM, but then the RGB is just a plain coated cable. It would be nice if they were all sleeved, just a little bit of an aesthetic thing, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, manage them in the PC without too many showing anyway. So before we put this into a system, let's talk about the pricing and it can be rather extreme depending on where you're going to shop. So for example, if you go to the Razer store and you want to buy the 240 Hambo, it's going to cost you £299. 360 will cost you 349 but if you go to Amazon, you can get the 240 for 169 nice. And then the 360 is £233, so drastically different if you actually shop around a little bit in comparison to the Razer store. The fans, these are coming in at $44.99 for a single 120mm, so that's this one here. A triple pack will cost you $119.99, and then the 140mm are $49.99, and then $129.99. You can find them a little bit cheaper by about £5 or so per single fan. If you want to buy a pack of three, you'll save about £10 for the 120s and £20 for the 140s. So something to bear in mind, not the cheapest stuff, but definitely look around if you're considering it. But I don't know about you guys, I wanna see this all lit up. So let's get it into a system. So now we're into Windows and Sign Apps, we can have a look at the options that we've got for the Hambo. As a quick FYI, I did have to update my software. So I went to the little settings option, then about, and then check for updates. I then did an additional firmware update from Razer on the website. Took a couple of minutes, but now we're up and running and it's all detected and all working nicely. So you've got some stats and things about what's going on with our system here. And then we have our different fan modes. So we can do a quiet option, normal or performance, or we can do an advanced setting, which is a nice custom curve. So you can do your own kind of specifics on where you'd like things to be. So you could do a nice smooth ramp. And then the same for the pump mode as well. You can do an advanced setting on there as well, but normal seems to be, you know, fine for most scenarios. Performance, if you're going to be doing some maybe heavy 3D render work, maybe you might want to turn that pump up to just get the flow nice and quick. So onto the lighting side, we've got a global brightness. We can adjust this if you want a little bit of a dimmer RGB, but if you're going razor RGB, you kind of want, you know, full chat. So we've also got some options for our effects. So we're currently set onto a wave. Now global quick effects will control the pump and the fans. You can do these individually if you want. So let's just uncheck that. So we can have a spectrum cycling, for example, on the pump and we could have maybe a breathing effect on the fans. Let's go for white and then red. It's quite a nice color. I use quite a lot actually on my peripherals. There we go. But if you want to just select both of them together, you can just use the global quick effects. So we've got audio meter. This will sync to whatever's playing. Currently not playing anything at the moment, so it's not gonna actually do anything. And then we can do breathing effects. So that will obviously do the white and the red that I've shown you, but we can do random colors. The fire effect, I really do like this actually. We first saw it on the Onata keyboard a few years ago and it's been one of my favorites actually from the Razer software ever since. Really nice gentle effect. Next up, we've got the spectrum cycle. That will go through all the 16.7 million different colors in a infinite loop. Static, obviously in the name, will stay whatever color you pick. Let's have a look at the white actually while we're here. Looks very nice actually, I do approve. So last one we got is the wave. You can do it in either direction. Nice, basically rainbow wave. You can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. You can even go to the advanced options and go to the Chroma Studio. This is where we'll get everything that's potentially RGB in our system. Just ignore these things over here, they're not actually currently in the system. But we can do my keyboard, so this is a Black Widow. You can change the different settings for that on there. And then you can also link the hammer with it as well, or can do them separately. And then here you can really fine tune each of the LEDs if you want. Hold down control and you can select a few. So say we want those to be blue. It will do those specific ones. A little bit of a bad combination to show on camera, but 
you know, just to show you that you can do individual LEDs if you wish. So let's say we want the pump block a static, drag that down, and we want the fans red. You can do that. I like that combination actually, it looks very nice. Or we could do the, the, the reverse, so we could do white fans and a red pump, that would look quite nice. Can customize this to your heart's content you've got loads of different options down the side as well so you can have just a pump that does a breathing effect i tell you what i would like to see though is a temperature effect so let's say if your processor is running nice and cool it goes green if it's a little bit warm maybe a yellow then when it gets really hot into the red that'd be a nice little option maybe something that could be implemented but i think for me the wave is my favorite of the lot really makes the most potential from the rgb that's in the hub so there we go guys, that was a look at the Razer Hanbo 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. A couple of things I just want to mention before we end out the video. I've actually started an install guide for this cooler since I did the start of the unboxing. I thought a lot of people are used to Razer things that you just unbox and plug in and you know you're good to go. But a cooler is a little bit more involved so I thought I'd do an instructional tutorial for anyone that's not quite sure about how to install it or you know want a guide to follow along with as they put it in. So that'll be up very soon. Um, that's also why there's such a delay from the start of this video and the end. A few things have changed, got a bit sick. So apologies for any continuity errors that you might have seen in the video. Um, but that's why, because it was a lot of work in the middle. Um, temperature wise for the Hambo, we saw a high of 81.3 on Cinebench, which I was really impressed with actually, considering it's a 240. I'm using the 5800X 3D, but if you're going to get something with more CPU performance, I would recommend you get a 360. It's quite cold in the UK as well, so that would account for the lower temperatures. Um, but if you're going to go for a higher SKU, even 12th, 13th gen, I would definitely go for a 360. Otherwise, installation wise, fairly easy, standard Aztec design. So, you know, back plate goes on, you've got your little posts, pump, and then the thumb screws. Pretty standard. Um, so, installation was very easy. And then you've got a nice lot of options for RGB that you can customize to your heart's content. Go real in depth with the studio should you fancy it as well. So for Razer's first attempt at cooling, it's been pretty successful. I'm happy to recommend this to anyone that's looking to install it in a new build, or if you've also got Razer things already, you can incorporate it in Synapse, you know, one piece of software for the controls, which is always nice. If you can find it on Amazon or a third party site for the cheaper price that I mentioned earlier on, then I would definitely recommend it for that. I think they are reaching with the store prices, but I think that will probably come down soon anyway. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I have got some other stuff for Razer coming up soon as well. So make sure you get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss any of that. I'll add all the product links to things you've seen in the description box below as well if you want to pick any up. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to Razer for sending this out for me to look at. And I'll see you all in the next one.